and welcome to my July garden guide where I list out all of the things that you can either start from seed or transplant right now in the month of July, along with some important garden tasks. My name is Jara. I teach people how to garden, grow food, raise backyard chickens, and keep bees. If these homesteading type topics interest you, make sure to subscribe to my channel because I post new videos on a daily basis to inspire and educate others. So let's get started with my July garden guide. This garden guide is most applicable to those who are in the southern parts of the United States, zones eight and up. But the information is beneficial to anyone who gardens in very hot summer climates. July marks the very middle of summer and for many gardeners in zones eight and up, you're experiencing extreme heat coupled with very dry weather like the West Coast states or very rainy weather like here in Florida. Only the toughest plants will survive and continue to produce and I have lots of ideas for you. But first let's discuss a few items on my to-do list for July. This month is the beginning of garden planning and gathering seeds for the crops that I wanna grow during fall. Early planning means I get an early start. Mid-July is a very exciting time for me. I will start sowing seeds for my favorite crop to grow ever, tomatoes. Right now I'm starting the process of deciding on which cultivars I wanna grow for a fall harvest and gather up all my seeds. I usually grow lots of indeterminate tomatoes, but this fall season I plan to experiment more with the determinates, primarily because I wanna can more sauce and salsa and the dwarf varieties. So if you have any favorites, please comment below. I will also start seeds for any summer crops that I would like to harvest one more time before fall is in full swing. Therefore, July marks the beginning of a busy time for sowing seeds. It is very important to note that it is very hot outside and there are a lot of pests that will quickly eat up tender seedlings. Therefore, I sow seeds indoors, or at the very least, I sow them inside of my screen porch. I do have an in-depth how to sow seeds guide video, which will show you my whole seed starting setup. I basically bring the whole thing indoors when sowing seeds in July, August, and September because, yeah, the environment outside is very hostile to baby seedlings. I will link that video in the description below. July is also a cleanup month. As my summer crops start to die off after harvesting, I begin the process of cleaning out the garden and solarizing beds if needed. That way, everything is ready in September when I start planting my fall and winter crops. This is also a great time to amend your soil in preparation for your fall garden since it takes a few weeks for amendments and fertilizers to break down. If you're in a rainy climate like me here in Florida, I recommend that you wait to amend your soil until the very end of September when the rains start to decline a little bit. If you have been thinking about installing drip irrigation, now is a great time to do it. My goal is to upgrade the drip irrigation system right here at my home garden before fall time. I really love the drip irrigation kits from dripdepot.com. They're very easy to put together. I was able to do it all by myself at my second garden. Not only will it save you a lot of time hand watering, but it will take care of your plants if you go on vacation. Mulch any soil surface that is exposed to the elements and sun. If the soil is bare, mother nature will fill it with something and that most likely will be weeds. So instead cover it with mulch or direct sow seeds for a cover crop or flowers. If you had severe soil borne diseases or pests like nematodes or bacterial wilt, it's a good time to solarize the beds with clear plastic to hopefully improve the situation before next season. Also be prepared for the pest. Summertime is when pest populations surge. I always have Bt, spinosad, and organic insecticidal soap handy check on your garden on a weekly basis to prune out old disease dying leaves because those are now hosts for whatever pathogens cause the leaf diseases. I like to spray with one cup of hydrogen peroxide per gallon of water to keep powdery mildew and some of the other diseases in check. Also if you can try vertical gardening as much as possible especially if you're in a rainy or humid area because this will pick the plants up from the floor making it harder for pests to get on them. It also improves air circulation, helping to dry the surface of the leaves, which will help slow down the spread of the leaf diseases. So let's get into what you could start from seed right now during the month of July. First up, we have squash and pumpkin. If you wanna grow squash or pumpkins during the summer, try to pick the cultivars in the Kirkabite Moscata family. This group boasts thicker and harder stems that make it more difficult for the pests, such as the squash bugs and the vine borers, to get into them. Here's a bunch of cultivars in this family that I personally love to grow. Now, I'm not saying you won't get the pests. It's just that these cultivars can handle a lot of pest damage before ultimately dying. So it helps to increase your chances of harvesting something. I use spinosad or BT sprays to control the worms and other chewing insects. I will add links in the description below to the same sprays that I use. Let's talk about cucumbers. 
I switched to growing the Asian cultivars specifically during the summer, like these right here. The Asian varieties have a much higher disease resistance, which is key since summer heat and rains cause the leaf diseases to proliferate. I like to spray with one cup of hydrogen peroxide per gallon of water to treat for any leaf diseases. Huge note about growing squash and cucumbers from seed right now during the summer. I highly recommend that you start seeds indoors. The pests will chew up your tender seedlings very quickly. Starting them indoors will help protect them from the high pest and disease pressure situation that is present outside during the summer. All the rain in Florida right now causes growth of pathogens like molds and fungus that spread through the air and easily infect seedlings. The situation outside is not a nice, clean, and safe environment for seedlings. I also have tutorials on growing squash and cucumbers from seed, which I will link below. So check those out for more in-depth details. And let me just offer some words of encouragement if you are gardening in the middle of summer in a very difficult climate like mine here in Florida. It is very hard. You are choosing to garden during the time of year that has the highest amount of disease and pest pressure. So you're gonna lose plants, it's normal. They're going to get infected, it's normal. The bugs are gonna chew them up, it's normal. As I'm going through you know, my social media channels, I can't tell you how many gardeners I see that are just frustrated. Like they think it's their fault or they're not a good enough gardener. No, you're, you're just battling like the worst of mother nature right now. So just give yourself some slack. If you're really, really struggling with the squashes and the cucumbers, there's a reason for that. The pests really like to chew those things up. So if you're not gonna be on top of it, I honestly just recommend that you don't bother growing them during the summer. Save those crops for the fall and springtime when the pest pressure is just naturally much less. I hope that you just don't give up gardening. It does get better, you know, as time goes by and you gain more experience. All right, so let's talk about another one of my favorite crops to grow during the summer, yard long beans and winged beans. I find that traditional pole and bush beans just don't like extreme summer heat. So I switched to growing yard long beans or the winged beans. They take the heat and the rain like a champ. Not to mention they're extremely productive. Winged beans have the added benefit that they are perennial in zones nine and up. So it's safe right now to just direct sow seeds for these right now outdoors. Check out my how to grow yard long beans from seed all the way to harvest tutorial, which I will link below. This is another crop to grow in July and it's one of my favorites, loofah. If you're in zones nine through 11, you still have time to sow seeds for loofah. If you didn't know, loofah is also edible if you harvest it before it gets longer than around seven or eight inches. A lot of people say it tastes like zucchini. I personally have not tried it, but if you have, please comment below. Now it can be a little tricky to get these seeds to germinate because they have like a really hard shell. So I recommend that you soak them in warm water overnight. You can safely direct sow seeds for them outdoors or start them in pots and containers, whatever you prefer. And if you're not interested in growing the loofah for its loofah sponges to be used in crafts and things like that, Grow for the bees and the butterflies. They really love these big, flat yellow flowers. Check out my How to Germinate Lufa Seeds YouTube video tutorial, which I will link below for my setup to get fast Lufa seed germination because yeah, they can be kind of tricky sometimes. Another awesome crop to grow right now, and probably one of my favorites, is Moringa. This is a superfood. Its leaves are full of tons of vitamins, minerals, and it's a very high source of plant protein. That stick right there is a seed pot. So I'm gonna harvest that and immediately plant it because I'm trying really hard to grow as much Moringa as possible. Moringa seeds are also covered in a really hard shell and they can be hard to germinate. But I have like this hot box setup that I create, which really helps to increase germination rates. So if you're struggling to grow Moringa from seed, I will link that video below in the description. By the way, the bees and the butterflies go crazy over the white flowers from the Moringa. Let's talk about Southern peas, black eyed peas, cow peas, and okra. It's safe to direct sow seeds for any of these types of peas. When it comes to okra, I do like to sow seeds in solo cups, like on my porch or something, just to monitor them a little bit better. And then I transplant them once their root systems are large enough that they overtake the solo cup. These crops grow rampant in the heat of summer. I really love to plant the southern peas underneath my fruit trees as a living mulch that produces something edible. My absolute favorite is the pink eye purple hall pea for its buttery flavor and texture. You can also direct sow seeds for lots of different kinds of flowers right now in the middle of July. My recommendations on flowers that handle the heat, pests, and diseases pretty well during the summer include amaranth, zinnias, sunflowers, cosmos, moonflowers, blanket flower, lantana, salvia, sage, and the Thai double blue butterfly pea. I like to find bare spots in my garden and just sprinkle those seeds over, gently rake them into the soil, and keep them nice and moist so they germinate quickly. 
If you want to start the Thai Double Blue Butterfly Pea Flowers from seed, I recommend that you do so in solo cups and keep that like indoors or on a patio. This plant is just a little bit slow to germinate and to get growing, so that's why I say to sow the seeds in solo cups, that way you can just closely monitor it. Next up we have herbs. It is way too hot to plant traditional herbs like basil and cilantro. Yes, cilantro doesn't like extreme heat or things like fennel, sage, or dill. I will be starting seeds for all those kinds of herbs next month in August. So more about that next month when I upload my August garden guide. Right now, focus on tropical heat-loving herbs like Thai basil, mint, agastache, green onions, bay leaf, Cuban oregano, ginger, turmeric, lemongrass, and garlic chives. Some of the heat-tolerant greens that you can start from seed include malakia and New Zealand spinach. I like to sprinkle seeds for those in bare spots of my garden. I find that they do a lot better in spots that get a lot of bright morning sun but afternoon shade. Anytime that I'm growing something to eat its leafy greens, I love to fertilize with blood meal. So if you're sprinkling seeds, mixing some blood meal into the soil, or if you're transplanting plants, just put some blood meal in the planting bowl. Whenever I use blood meal specifically for all of my leafy greens, they just get really lush and they have an intensely deep dark green color. In this month of July, I will be doing another succession sowing of sweet corn. It's definitely possible to grow corn right now, even in a very hot climate, but you gotta be prepared for the corn earworm. Some of you report to me that you don't have worms in your garden, which I think you're very lucky. But here in Florida and for many areas of the Southern United States, gardening is a constant battle with the worms. At no time have I ever grown sweet corn here in Florida and not had a worm infestation. I highly recommend the use of spinosad spray to control the corn earworm. I have several videos on the topic of growing corn, which I will link below. Next up, we have tomatoes, peppers, and eggplants. This is a Thai lavender frog eggplant, which I feel like I say this with everything that I grow, that this one's my favorite, but really, they're all my favorite. This one is really fun to grow, especially if you have a smaller garden or you want to grow in containers. I'm actually growing this in some grow bags. What I love about it is that it's more compact <laughs> compared to like the regular cultivars of eggplant that I grow. It's kind of low sprawling, so the height of the plant is about right here. That's like two feet, and it grows more horizontal, whereas the other cultivars of eggplant that I'm going, they get massive, okay? For one, they're perennial plants, so they're going to live in your garden for a long time if you're in a warm climate. And so, I mean, they're massive. They get like four feet tall for me sometimes. So this is a great choice if you need something more compact. And it produces these little like one inch in diameter eggplants. They are so fun to cook with. You could throw them like in soups and stir fries. I really like to marinate them, skewer them, and then put them on the grill. This is a hard to find variety. Not a lot of people offer seeds for the Thai lavender frog eggplant. I do have some on my website if you want to try growing it. But anyways, back to the tomatoes, eggplant, and peppers. It is time to start seeds indoors for these crops in preparation for transplanting in September if you want to get a fall harvest. I sow seeds in a solo cup. The solo cup is big enough to house the seedling for two months, so I don't have to waste time potting up. I do not recommend planting these kinds of crops in something smaller because they will easily get root bound, which will stunt their growth. It is also way too hot outside, which will stunt the seedling growth, even for these heat loving crops. And again, there are a lot of pests and diseases outside, which will easily infect or destroy your seedlings. Tomatoes are especially sensitive to the pests and diseases. They catch everything. Therefore, if you want the healthiest seedlings that are nice, big, transplant size by September, I highly recommend sowing and growing them indoors. My husband is not going to be happy about me setting up one of my huge seed racks and my lights and everything in the kitchen, but he will still love me because that's what I got to do. Things start to cool down and it stops raining every day in Florida during the later part of September, which is why it's a good month to plant these kinds of crops. Word of caution for areas that get hit by hurricanes, like me in Florida where I got hit by two hurricanes last fall, practically back to back. The excessive rain and flooding brought by the hurricanes will easily kill these kinds of crops. The excess water in the soil not only causes root rot, but it also facilitates rapid growth of soil diseases like tomato wilt and helps them spread across the area. This is not curable. These types of diseases are systemic. They affect the inside of the plants. What this means is that you can't treat for it. So the best bet if you get tomato wilt is to just yank that plant out. Do not compost with it because now it's a host for that pathogen and it will continue to spread. 
To help mitigate crop loss from hurricanes, try to grow tomatoes in grow bags, containers, or raised beds that have better drainage. Choose cultivars with high disease resistance, especially resistance to the various types of wilt and nematodes. Experiment with growing determinate types of tomatoes as they are known to have a little bit higher disease resistance and they produce harvestable fruit earlier and all at once. I prefer to grow indeterminates in the springtime and harvest everything before summer arrives. Florida springtime is our dry season and no hurricanes. <laughs> Therefore, there is less incidence of disease and pests. Last year, I had a live tomato like grow along with me series where I sowed seeds with my viewers and kind of walked them through the whole process. I plan to have something similar, like as in live events this season too. So if you're interested, make sure you sign up for my email newsletter. There's a link in the description below because that is where I will announce the dates and the times. Now let's talk about some of the things that you can transplant during the month of July. There's quite a few heat loving tropical greens. I'm just gonna list them right here. These things are typically not started from seed. You would either have to get a cutting or an actual plant. And I have quite a few of these plants on my website if you wanna try growing one. Typically they grow well in full sun, but some of these grow good in partial shade, like again, underneath my fruit trees. Next up we have sweet potatoes. I'm growing this in a big grow bag. I think this is a 20 gallon size, but I got these cuttings from my plants that are already growing in my garden. I harvested a few tubers, so I took cuttings and rooted them and it's really taking off. If you still have five to six months before your first winter frost, you have time to hurry up and plant some sweet potatoes. A lot of directions say that sweet potatoes are ready to harvest in like 90 days. I mean, yeah, you could harvest them at 90 days, just know they're gonna be small. I actually like to leave them in the ground 150 to 180 days, so when I dig them up, they're nice big tubers. If you live in areas where your ground doesn't freeze, you can grow root crops like this shampoo ginger right here or regular culinary ginger. It's safe to plant them right in the ground. This is shampoo ginger or awa pui. It collects this liquid in its flower cones, which can be used as an all natural hair shampoo or skincare product. This propagates through rhizomes just like culinary ginger. So depending on the time of the year, I sometimes have rhizomes for sale or actual sprouted plants if you wanna try growing this. If you live in colder climates, you're gonna to have to treat this like a house plant. You can grow it in a big container. Just know it gets really big. Look at how tall these leaves are. This is already hitting like five feet. But if it's winter time and you're expecting cold, you can trim all this off and bring it indoors. This is some culinary ginger that I have growing in a grow bag. You can even see some of the rhizome popping up here. If I wanted to, I could harvest this as needed and cook with it. I also have rhizomes or actual sprouted plants for culinary ginger on my website, depending on the time of year. And this right here is just a row of different kinds of turmeric. They grow rampant through their rhizomes. So to control the situation a little bit, I like to grow them in containers or grow bags. I find that the shampoo ginger, culinary ginger, and turmeric fare much better in a spot that gets afternoon shade, but a lot of bright morning sun. Next up, we have the other types of tropical root crops, and there are so many. So I'm just gonna list a whole bunch right here. If you're located in an area where your ground doesn't freeze for the winter time, then it's okay to go ahead and plant these outside. If your ground does freeze, it will definitely kill these plants. Please be advised that these crops take 9 to 12 months to be ready for harvest. And they get very big. True yams, for example, are a root crop, but it's a vining plant, so it does require something to grow up upon. And then we have a ton of different kinds of tropical fruit crops. Most of these things are kind of hard to find. Like really you would only find them at your local nurseries that carry, you know, rare fruit crops or tropical fruit crops and that carry the cultivars that will grow well and actually produce in your area. So I definitely encourage you to go check out your local nurseries and or look at my website because sometimes I do have plants for some of these things. The most important thing about planting any kind of fruit trees right now is that it's summertime, it's really hot. So you need to monitor them and make sure they're not drying out, getting stressed out, that they have enough water. If you're in Florida, it pretty much rains every day. So most likely you don't have to be like watering all the time but just check those plants anyways. Typically when I buy fruit trees, I get the three gallon container size. So yeah, they have a root system, but it's not like the biggest, most deepest developed root system. So they can easily dry out. Once they get more established and more mature, they tend to be totally fine living and surviving off from the natural rainwater that we get. This is one of my favorite tropical fruit crops. This is the Barbados cherry. It's the closest thing that I can get to growing something cherry-like here in Florida. These are delicious, they taste like fruit punch. And this tree will put on multiple flushes throughout the warmer parts of the year. The next crop that I have is Roselle. 
this is such a Floridian crop. Like you will see all of the gardening websites and Facebook groups just littered with Roselle Calyx harvest, you know, towards the very end of the year. Roselle is part of the hibiscus family and you grow it to harvest the calyxes, which are used to make teas and a cranberry like, you know, jam or jelly because here in Florida, we can't grow cranberries, but this tastes very, very similar to cranberries. That is why sometimes we call it the Florida cranberry. These things are pretty easy to start from seed. The only thing I would say is start them in some solo cups something a little bit bigger because they grow pretty rapidly. If they get root bound, it will kind of stunt their growth. Now, here's the thing. If you want to get a nice big harvest of calyxes at the end of the year, these plants have to be pretty big. So by July, I do not recommend that you start out with sowing them from seed. Instead, it would be much better if you are transplanting them. So that's why I'm saying maybe not the best idea to start these from seed. You should have done that a few months ago if you wanted to go that route, but you still have time to transplant some plants if you have them or buy them. Normally I have seeds or plants on my website almost year round for Roselle. I have to hurry up and plant these actually. Well, that's my comprehensive list for the month of July. If I missed anything, please comment below or just let me know what you're most excited about growing this summer. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up. You have no idea how much that helps my channel. Also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. That way you get notified of when I post new videos. I post this guide on the monthly gardening guide section of my website so you can save, copy, or share it. Or sign up for my email newsletter. There's a link in the description below and I will automatically send it to you at the beginning of each month. Thank you for watching.